Hi there and welcome to the video. My name's Gareth and today we're going to be looking at how to create better drop shadows in PhotoP. So as you can see here, I've got the background and the object, which is a game controller, on two separate layers. And I've already cut the controller out to save time beforehand. So the first step is to go to your layer. In this case, we're going to go next to the word controller in this empty space and double click to bring up your layer style dialog box. Let's just move this to the side so we can see a bit more what we're doing. Right, there's, there's lots of options and lots of choices in here, but today we're going to focus on drop shadow, which is right at the bottom. So check the box. And as you can see, it brings up a generic drop shadow. This may appear different on yours, depending on if you've used this before and what your last parameters were. But what we'll do is we're going to start from the top. Just going to turn this up a bit. We're going to start from the top and go down. But the contour section here, I am going to save till last just because it's a bit more of an advanced function that you might not even need to use. So we'll start at the top. It will most likely say blend mode normal. And there's a color box here. Now shadows in real life are never pure black or gray. So the first thing we want to do is click on that box to bring up the color picker. And we're going to give it a tone of the background color, which is far more realistic. So to do that, we'll just move our cursor into the main shot and just click on the background. And as you can see, it's color picked that color, but we're going to make it a bit darker. So we're going to drag it down a bit just until it's a darker tone of the same color. Click OK. And then set the blend mode to multiply. And all that means is if you put this on another background that has maybe some texture and other things going on, then setting the shadow to multiply will just make it interact a lot better with what's going on in the background. So now we go down to opacity. This is some a creative thing, depending on how strong you want the shadow, but we're just going to leave it somewhere around 70 ish around there. And we can adjust that later. So the next is the angle. Now, if you're doing something very graphical, it doesn't matter. You, you can choose the angle dependent on what you prefer, what's correct for your own tastes. But in this case, we're actually going to follow the lighting of the object. So if you look at the object here and you look at the cross pad on the controller, you can see there are highlights down the left hand side edges, which indicates the light is coming from the left. Therefore, the shadow will be falling on the right. So I'm just going to adjust the angle control here until we get shadow falling to the right. It doesn't have to be completely parallel. It can be a little bit up or down. If it looks a bit more interesting. So what I do it's going down a bit. Okay. So I'd say that's good for that. Now distance, this was how far away the drop shadow falls. And again, this, this can be artistic. You can use artistic license for this. If you wanted the object to make it like it was floating off the surface, or propped up, then you could create a larger drop shadow. Um, sorry, a larger distance to the drop shadow, but never make it too thin because it's got to be the minimum size has really got to be determined by how thick your object would be. So for example, if I made the drop shadow for this con controller too small, it almost now looks like it's cut out from a piece of paper and it's not, it's not got any depth to the object because it would cast the shadow appropriately thick to the height of the object. So again, but those rules can go out the window if you're doing more of a graphical, you know, a graphical thing and you're not too worried about keeping it super realistic. Obviously I'm just telling you the main theories and you can use it how you like, of course, if you want it a certain way spread, I'm going to leave because I generally don't use that and size. This is going to determine how hard or soft the shadow is. So as you drag the size up, it's going to make the shadow a lot more diffused. And if you drag it down, it's going to make the shadow a lot harder. Now this is completely to taste, but to keep things realistic, which I'm trying to do a little bit here, we're going to try and match the lighting of the overall object. So this looks quite soft lighting to me because you can see the highlights and the shadows and the shading around where the control sticks are and things like that. They're very soft. There's no very harsh shadows or highlights which indicates that it's been lit quite softly. So I'm just going to make the shadow appropriate to that. So somewhere around there. We'll come back to contour in a minute, but the last control here is noise. Now I do like to add a little bit of noise to my shadows, maybe just in this case, something like six or seven, something around that. And let me see if I can zoom in and show you. 
So it's added just a bit of grain to the shadow there, a little bit of tooth as it's called. And all that represents really, I mean, you can hardly see it. So you can quite easily not worry about that. But the way I like to use it is because when objects are photographed in real life, if you were to get any natural grain or noise from the camera, it's more likely to show up in darker and shadowy areas. So I just like to put a little bit of noise in there and it also prevents some banding problems that you may get. So that's the basic parameters. Now, obviously you can adjust these and tweak these however you like um, to match up another object on the scene. If you've got multiple objects and you're adding an, an object to an already shot scene, so you can try and match it as best you can with these controls. But the last thing I'm going to come back to, and this is this is a bit more of a, um, I'll say, say a pro tip, but it's not many people know about this or use it, but it's the contour. So as you can see, if you click this arrow, you get a lot of presets. And as you can also see, when I choose them, they do very strange things to the shadow, which doesn't look very good. But we can make our own and we can use it to just get a little bit more of a natural shadow. So to do this, we will click on our contour, the main contour icon on the default graph. Well, it's more of a, a curve really, and it will bring it up here. Now how the contours work is if I just put a dot in the middle and pull it up like a normal curve, you'll see the shadow expanding. And if I pull it down, the shadow is restricting contracting. So what we can do here is we can just put a couple of more points on the chart on the line. Sorry, it doesn't really matter where, but this is just what I like to do and pin it in the middle like I've done here. And then if you take the top or the bottom one and you play around with just pushing it up or down a little bit, you can see here, or hopefully you can see with the YouTube compression, it almost creates like a slight double edge shadow. So that's how it was. And watch the edge of the shadow and hopefully you can see. See how it just kind of splits the shadow apart a little bit. And this just makes a little bit more of a um, complex shadow. So it doesn't look so obviously drop shadow-ish. So if I click OK on that, and if I go here and I jump between, oh, first of all, sorry, what we need to do here is once we've made our curve, our customer curve, we want to go to this screen and click define new, and then it will add it to the list of thumbnails. I'll show you here. So we have it at the bottom there. So if you watch the shadow now, and I'll go between the first one and then the one we've just created, see how it almost creates like a secondary shadow, which is a lot more realistic because shadows in real life aren't just perfectly solid like that. There are variances along the edge and depending on where other bits of light are hitting the object and things like that. So that's just the last little pro tip. You do not have to use that by any means, but it's just something I like to do um, to help make the generic drop shadows just that little bit more realistic. <laughs> Thank you.